Well, I was very surprised to break these numbers. I mean, I was expecting uh, a slower set of numbers, but still in the green profit. Give us your reaction to the latest numbers first. Well, the headline figure is certainly concerning. It is a loss. The biggest concern is at the airline level, the, uh, the loss from the airlines, the passenger and the cargo businesses, sort of a 430 million U.S. dollar loss. That is a very significant loss for the airline business. The profit over the years has been uh, flattered by Cathay share profits from subsidiaries and associates. But even this past year, uh, the share of those subsidiaries and associates wasn't enough to overcome that very steep airline loss. Yeah, Kathy also saying that its unrealized hedging gains were of uh, more than three and a half billion Hong Kong dollars. Of course, uh, uh, this has been a key issue for Kathy. So they now have uh, reorganized, saying that they will hedge a jet fuel for two years instead of uh, four like they usually do. Will this help? It can, yes, but uh, unfortunately, they are still walking through uh, some hedges they made uh, when fuel was good. Uh, and if fuel does remain at its sort of current levels, the next uh, two years could still be equally painful. Yeah, it seems like airlines can't really get those fuel hedges right. I have to point out we had Malaysia Airlines just a couple weeks ago saying that it was hedging for oil at $70 a barrel, and now, of course, it's around $50. Um, but we know part of the problem when it comes to Cathay Pacific is the fact that it's getting competition, and that's challenging its Hong Kong hub model. The hub model is of utmost interest for airlines here in the region as well. So what do you think the future is for that model? Well, for CAFE, they are deeply committed uh, with unwavering commitment to a premium strategy and the Hong Kong hub. There have been calls for them to decrease their transfer traffic and focus more on local traffic, but they're not going to do that. They're going to ride this out. They have shareholder support to deliver a very long-term vision. That's what they're going to work towards the future in eight years uh, and in the next two to three, try to clean up these losses at the airline level. We have seen some reorganization within Cathay. They announced it in January. And given this really, really bad set of numbers, could we see probably a new CEO replacing Ivan Chu? Well, I think Ivan Chu uh, has come to an end and, and maybe for a little bit uh, longer than uh, he's been, uh, been in the post. And I expect probably in the next few weeks we'll hear about some management changes. It's a very likely expectation that we'll see Rupert Hogg uh, assume the post and sort of in about three years he'll get to turn around the ship and, you know, afterwards in his time as chairman, probably work on the more long-term strategy for CAFE to move it away from being just an airline to being much more of a brand. I think this will be very good for the people at CAFE. Staff morale is very low, and Rupert, I think, will bring some charm and some people aspects that will be very good to boost morale with uh, the staff at CAFE. Cathay Pacific also saying that they are not proposing a second interim dividend. What does it mean for investors? I mean, the stock hasn't performed too bad when it comes to year-to-date numbers. Well, Cathay will make no apologies about uh, not about uh, ignoring the small investors. The biggest investors are Swire and Air China, and both of those two are looking for a very long-term picture. So any short-term prospects uh, from investors are not going to be the immediate target of management and the, and the two largest shareholders.